I uh, I'm gonna just do an introduction so I can put it on the yeah. on the thingy. So this is the fourth qualifier for uh, the Gosu League, and we're here seeing uh, ESG versus FM. And I'm I actually think it's the semi final. Am I correct? Um, or quarters? It's either a quarter final or semi final, um, depending on how quick the matches have gone today, but. I'm quite like you. I haven't haven't been completely okay. up to date, but we're we're just going to focus on the magic. Yeah, stuff, so. exactly. And uh, well, and I have a go caster. Gods, hello. Hey, nice to cast with you for the first time. Chief. First time, yeah. And now first we... of many, of course. Of course, yeah. We still have the awkwardness. Weird, but uh, yeah, uh, we were already into the bands, and we have Morphling as a first ban. I find that quite odd, to be fair. Yeah. I... I've I've never seen a morphling first ban in my my life. I think I want to say. No, oh, it's uh, <laughs> it's original. They really don't want to play for him, and well, oh, and they don't want to pick him either because you know they got first pick. But uh, ch yeah. the uh, the rest of the bands are quite normal actually. Yeah, nothing too unusual with the rest. But I mean, maybe they just know that this team FM like to pick up morphling a bit. Um, but the rest of the bands, yeah, fairly normal. Tide, Chen, Prophet, Invoker, and Lycan. And uh, there's still some strong heroes uh, left yeah, in the pool. Yeah, I was going to say. Runner, um, Shadow Shaman. Yeah, still. oh yeah, Shadow Shaman, definitely. There's a lot of strong pushing heroes, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of strats they go for here. Yeah, Shadow Demon is also still in, even though he seems a bit out of fashion lately. And Darkseer, of course. Yeah, could we forget Darkseer? Yeah, and I mean, Darkseer sort of became less popular because when they changed the Aghanim Scepter, you can only make illusions of your opponents, not your allies. Yeah. It sort of fell out of fashion a bit. So um, ESG still thinking it's quite strong, and definitely it is quite strong. I mean, CLG are one of the teams who do use it quite frequently as well. Well, that, that, yeah. It makes me wonder, though, if we want to have it as a first pick. I mean, I don't think uh, that FM would have picked it up because it's not that big of a first pick to pick up, to be fair. Or at least that's how I see it. I, I think it's okay as a first pick because it's one of those heroes that it doesn't like. It's not like you pick up the Axe here and then the other team thinks, "Oh, there's we can just counter it with this one hero." There's no real easy way to deal with a Dark Seer. It's going to be a hero that's going to be annoying regardless. Um, and then we're going to see a Windrunner and Earthshaker. So two fairly sort of normal standard picks coming out from Team FM. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm so expecting the Venomancer pick up uh, actually about now also. Also one uh, that's good to have if you, if you want a Darkseer, because it's good to have, hard to counter. Venomancer isn't that easy to counter either, because he's just annoying as, a, as hell in the first bit also. Especially yeah. uh, when harassing if you play in support. Venomancer, and it's one of those years if you're trying to push as well, and you suddenly walk into this big line of Plague Wars and you just can't push in, it's yeah pretty damn annoying. And I, mean, I think ESG may pick up one of one of their uh, sort of a support hero here, try to sort of hide what kind of carry heroes they're going to go, because they don't want any sort of carry or sort of semi-carry hero getting too countered by the other team. True. It's going to be Lashrek, though. It's uh, looking for some pushing power. Yeah, that Diabolic Deed does tear apart towers, so um, maybe going to pick up a Venomancer as well, because, I mean, that's a nice sort of support base hero that can push fairly easily. Yeah, and that, it's going to be Crystal Maiden instead. Well, uh, it's a support nonetheless, though. And it will help the Lishrek with his mana pool at the start. Yeah, if, if, um, uh, picked yeah. up earlier. I, 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 often, though, I think nowadays with uh, Crystal Maiden support, you actually don't even see the Brilliant Sora, though. Often they'll just go for the two nukes, the Frostbite and the Crystal Nova, simply because teams sort of buy seem to buy quite a few Arcane Boots on their team. They'll get at least two or three Arcane Boots, and you don't really need to rely on the Brilliant Sora so much. And... I mean, having those nukes can just be so good for killing heroes. Yeah, true. I have, I, I have to say, I, uh, that, that, well, the the matches I casted so far, they're a bit slower with the fashion, as in they copy what other people do mostly. So Crystal yeah. Maiden is still being played there with uh, mostly with Brilliant Sora. Yeah, they're they're a bit behind, so to speak. Okay, okay, and Queen Paints. I mean, I think it's a strong pick. It's got a lot of mobility, and it's something that. Because um, Darkseer, it's easy to chase heroes using that surge, so picking up the Queen of Pain, a nice mobile hero, it's kind of hard to lock down. And I mean, looking at this, the Radiant team, they're all quite squishy as well, so with sort of the Fissure, Power Shot, 
and Queen of Pain. That's a lot of sort of ranged AoE spam, so that could really hurt the squishy lineup from ESG. And it could also mean that with the Darkseer, they could hit stuff on the other side of the wall if needed. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah, yeah. going to make the wall really a bit point. less... Uh, well, one good vacuum could, could clear that out, but still. Uh, and I think if you blink over the wall, it doesn't copy you, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can blink over it, doesn't copy you. If you force stuff, it copies you, because you go through it. But uh, blink does not make an illusion. Yeah, also nice. And uh, actually, the Venomizer and Antimagion are banned. I'm still uh, I'm still missing the right-click damage on both, even though Queen of Pain's yeah, a little bit of right-click damage, but still, mostly. Not like... I mean, nowadays teams aren't always picking up a hard carry. They'll often maybe just have sort of a, a mid-game sort of pushing strategy where they will go for... I mean, a hero like even Leshrac is one of their carries. They'll have like a Leshrac and we may even see Shadow Shaman being picked up as well so that they can just, around 20 to 30 minutes, just focus on pushing and... I mean, it'll basically be less track as their main carry. Similarly, you can see Queen of Pain played as sort of a semi carry as the main farming role. I mean, Queen of Pain and Winner, they can do a lot of damage even in the late game. True. They they do ban out a Tinker, though, uh, to stop uh, anti pushing, so uh, it seems like they do want to. Uh, yeah, they, they'll probably pick up the Shadow Shaman, that's my guess anyway, also for uh, ESG, that is. It yep. Uh Enigma's still in the pool as well. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot of Enigma as well as Beastmaster. Those two heroes, I think both of them would fit in well with the Radiant team. They don't really have a hero who will solo the mid lane unless they want to put Leshrac there. Um, so, and Enigma as well, could you put in that jungle and then they can run the sort of CM Leshrac at bottom, Darkseer at top, some solo mid hero with the Enigma maybe in jungle. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Enigma would be terribly deadly with the Vacuum also. If, uh, if timed properly with the Darkseer. Oh yeah, I can see can see it now. Yeah. Back, back. <laughs> Maybe like, just throw throw in a Kunker or an SF or something with some huge huge ulti as well, and that's, yeah. that's what we need this game. That's true. That that's uh, some nice excitement. Even though um, one pipe can reduce a lot of that damage, and that's yeah. I think that's I think a lot of teams nowadays, every team we're going to be seeing get both mech and pipe on their team. So these big AOE strategies just aren't, aren't as powerful. I, I definitely think Radiant team need mech and pipe because looking at Queen of Pain, ES Winner, that's a lot of sort of spam and nukes, so you, they're definitely going to need Darkseid going for the pipe, one of their heroes may be getting a mech as well. Yeah, and, oh, and, and the other way around too, I mean, uh, FM wants to go for that pipe uh, even faster, I hope, for them, especially yep. uh, with Lishrek there. And uh, it's going to be a run, so some right-click damage still, uh, but also a nice early game, so not, not that dependent on, the, on all that late game, even though, yeah, it just needs some form. Yeah. It's it's a nice hero to pick up because it can have an imp early on as early to mid game it can have an I mean it can have an impact it has got the arrow for ganking you've got the starfall with a nuke and then late game you've got the right click damage being an agility hero um, going for that manta into MKB butterfly whatever you want it's a hero that really ha it scales well early to mid to late game although it doesn't really shine in any point of the game but it's always going to be solid yeah especially if uh, if those arrows get landed properly then yeah. That, that can make team fights, basically, for them. And uh, for uh, for FM, they're they're ticking into their bonus time for uh, for the well second last pick for them anyway. And I'm uh, I'm expecting they still need support. I was gonna say well, it's fence for spirits surprise, and uh, an extra stun, which is uh, quite useful also. Yeah, they've got some really strong lanes. I mean, with Eventual Spirit and Earthshaker, those two support heroes, their tri lane is going to be very scary. Um, they may even go for a hard carry simply because they've got such strong supports that they, whatever hard carry they pick up will almost definitely farm very well. So they could pick up something like a Faceless Void, a Drow Ranger even, um, and it'll almost be guaranteed to get a lot of free farm. Yeah, I think actually a Drow would be very nice with the Silence because they're so caster heavy on... or semi cast heavy at least on uh, on ESG but I have to say I haven't seen a lot of drows picked up as a hard carry lately so I think faces void will be a better option especially since they can easily take another ranged uh, melee with it with the lineup they have yeah I mean they can but it'll be I think drow ranger well I mean like like you said, does a lot of right click damage and is could really counter that team well with that silence because of the less track the Darkseer. If Darkseer can't use his surge to escape because of silence, I mean you can act suddenly he becomes a lot easier to kill and 
they're going to need something to take down the Dragon Knight. So maybe they're not going to go with right-click damage because Dragon Knight has a lot of armor with his Dragon Blood skills. So they might go for maybe more sort of burst damage and maybe get some another nuke in their lineup even. But they could just try out carry Dark Dragon Knight as well. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, that, that's probably uh, going to be tricky with the lane, with the pushing lane up for uh, for EST. If they're going to get those towers early on, Dragonite will get a lot of gold from that and have a have a head start, so to speak, because there's not that much pushing power on uh, on FM. Yeah, um, they uh, yeah, at the moment they're sort of all about the laning. They've got really great lanes. Windrunner, is, I mean, is a very hard hero to beat solo. Often though, it will be in that side lane against a tough lane, but. Even then, it can survive. Queen of Pain at mid is a pretty devastating solo hero. Can easily get runes, um, get rune control because of the blink. And then, yeah, VSES can roam around. They're gonna go with the Slada though. So, they—that's how you deal with the high armor DK. You get yeah. a hero like Slada. Amplify on it. Armor. Amplify damage. Yeah. I just uh, noticed since all the picks are now done, I have to change something in my settings. Didn't have time for that yet. Camera speed. There. But yeah, Slider stole a pickup, and uh, and he will get good farm indeed. And I think is he as fast as the Darkseer uh, if he has his uh, speed up with the surge, uh, sprint I, to surge. I think max. Once when, when sprint is maxed and you have treads, your your movement speed is the same. Uh, max movement speed is 522, mm -hmm. and so surge so, yeah. So sprint sprint level four is the same as uh, surge, so you can actually keep up. Nice. That will be uh, will be needed since uh, no yeah, silence yeah. then. Um, I actually uh, I don't know these teams yet. Like I said, uh, I, I can uh, introduce uh, ESG because I'm assuming that maybe some of the viewers don't know them either. So I'm just gonna go over who's picking what, who is playing what uh, from uh, ESG, and then you go over FM um, later. Sounds good. Okay. You're seeing uh, Lashrak being played by uh, Selvin 3D, and let's look. At Looking at the lineup, I think he might be going mid actually. Uh, we see Darkseer being played by uh, Zanat. Hawkeye is playing the Mirana. Cilium is playing the Crystal Maiden. And the last one, which is the Dragonite, is played by Fields. And over on the Dire team, yeah. Team Hi. FM, we've got Marge playing the Windrunner. We've got Daco of Doom on the Ventral Spirit supporting ES. The Earthshaker being played by Boogie Boy. We've got Queen of Pain being played by Lapiz, and finally Noerti is playing the Slada. Seemingly going middle. Yeah, this is interesting. I think they're expecting DK to be mid, so they want to put Slada solo mid against the DK, and they're going to put Windrunner in the tri lane. So this means their tri lane is going to be a lot scarier, because the problem is tri lane with Slada is they have two melee heroes in their tri lane, yeah. which is a bit weak. If they put Windrunner there as their ranged farmer, it's going to be a lot of killing power. Yeah, and there's no smokes up on either, by the way, so they're just gonna see each other, I think. And there's the stun, and there's the surge. Got an <laughs> She's not gonna survive. Lasset goes to Marana. Nice gank. With the uh, Lashrak coming from the bottom there. I, I, I loved how they used the surge on the DK. Yeah. <laughs> Often you'll see Daxi getting Iron Shell at level 1, but they got surge at, surge at level 1, which meant DK was guaranteed to get a stun. The melee stun is sometimes really hard to get in those level 1 ganks, but with the Surge, it, it, they pulled it off. It's deadly, yeah. But, uh, they have Darkseer, or so Darkseer, wow, Dragonite is on, uh, still on the bottom lane, and they're gonna try lane with the Dragonite and Lashrak, and uh, Mirana, uh, Mirana, Crystal Maiden, jeez. Yeah. Mirana actually and going middle. It will be try lane versus try lane at bottom, so quite a bit of action will probably be here, and because the these Radiant team got first blood, they have a slight advantage, although it was the Marana who's going to be at mid, so it's not one of the bottom heroes who has that extra gold, but either way, I mean, this will be an interesting lane. CM, Leshrac, they're both very squishy, and the Earthshaker, Windrunner, they're a bit harder to kill, and they've got the ranged nuke, so I think Dyer have a slight advantage. There is a, well, yeah, there's a stun from from Vengeful Spirit, but uh, Frostbite and a stun from Leshrac? I don't know. It will be, uh, it will be uh, tricky who, who times it better. I guess. Yeah. Who does the first one? <laughs> Managed to get a good one in. And and they both know that the which three are there, I assume, so they they will yeah. be both be very careful. It looks like the Radiant team aren't even gonna try fight for now they're just gonna use that creep pull there. We see Lestrak, he's gonna stack it once and then pull it and basically use that to deny XP. 
So they're just gonna, like, they're going to try initially just to get a bit of a level advantage and prevent the Dire team from getting any farm. Harassing a little bit. <laughs> the Crystal Maiden. Oh, some heavy harassment already on the slaughter from the from the Marana. I guess he w yeah, he wasn't expecting a Marana to be there, so he's gonna have a hard time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he has got the stout shield, which when you're soloing mid against, the, especially if you're gonna be against a possible range here, you need to get that stout shield. Block as much damage as possible. Um, I, it'll be interesting if there's a bottle. Oh, there's already a sun on the bottom lane, and uh, Vengeful Spirit getting off, uh, well, with her life so far. That yeah, that's why the di the die team they're trialing. It's hard to kill them because if they go in Ventral Spirit, ES just has the AOE range stun to sort of save the Ventral Spirit, which we'll just see um, whenever that happens. Yeah. There's already uh, the South popped on the slider, and he only has one Tango's left. So. Yeah, he's he's suffering a bit in the, the mid lane. He might pick up a bottle once he gets to 600 gold, but he's running out of regen quickly and. Um, bottle slather is not something you'd normally see. Nope. And uh, yeah, he's out of mana. So, for last hits, that's also... Uh... Nice well, actually, he has more than Marana. It's 6 for 8. Uh, as in 6 for Marana and 8 for the slather. It's not that bad. Yeah, it, it seems so. Gang, gang coming incoming, in. yes. Oh, failed gank by Willis Shrek is uh, in a little bit of trouble, even though he pops his edict, but he, uh, he managed to run away mm. so far. And they go for it. They want to go for the Earthshaker. I so wonder if they're going to manage to get out of, out of stun. This Dragonite's try, but he's not fast enough. Nope. Too close on the Lesh Rack. Pops the south. Yeah, he got, he got very low there. Um, they didn't quite get the DK stun. And that's where DK having a melee stun in a trial line is really weak because they need to set it up for him. And even Lesh Rack can't even set up the stun because Lesh Rack is stun it needs an initiation as well. So it's always going to be the CM who goes in first. And CM going in first, well, CM's a very squishy. Yeah, <laughs> the, and, and that might be too obvious also. I mean, if you see CM running in, you're, you think, you well, you're going to expect something is wrong. Uh, yeah. yeah. There is indeed a bottle on the slider now. He already used two charges of it also. And it's uh, gonna yeah. have to use this, the third <laughs> third chart soon. He'll he'll be okay in mid lane if he can get a few runes. Um, we're gonna see. Well, Morana actually picks up boots first. Hasn't got a bottle yet, but if he can get a couple runes, he should be okay. Yeah, and he does have a sprint to to chase uh, Morana for it. Should it need it be? I mean, level two on that one. A lot faster. On the top lane. Um, there's happy farming going on between uh, Queen of Pain and uh, and the Darkseer. It's just uh. Well, one one of them's happily farming. Okay, if you yeah. Look at the Darkseer <laughs> is not happily farming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Seven last Darkseer's hits on a Darkseer. Really... Yeah, I mean Darkseer's not doing horribly, but uh, Queen of Pain definitely definitely having the time of his life has a lot of CS, a lot of denies. It's quite surprising though, if because Ion Shell lets you farm. A lot easier as a dark seer, but I guess maybe not having that uh, iron shell at level uh, level one might have hurt him a bit in the, at the start there. Could be. Yeah, and the, I mean against the good last hitter, iron sh iron shell doesn't actually like last hit for you because the queen of pain can still easily yeah. deny when the iron shell's there. Very true. Um, you actually need to go in to right click to get those last hits. So queen of pain just timing most of these it seems and doing really well. Yep, and I. Uh, well, I'm just checking uh, on the bottom lane the the difference between uh, the wind runner and uh, or yeah the wind runner and uh, <laughs> and the dragonite. That's a huge difference there. Dragonite on 25, wind runner on three. Wow. That's, that's painful. That's their tri lane. This is Earthshaker, Ventral Spirit, and wind runner. Like it's hard to come up with a better tri lane where they've been kept to just three creep kills. That's that, that really surprises me. Yeah. And wind runner is still level two even. And hasn't skilled her level 2 point. I mean, I, I, she did die, so that did help. And she's getting harassed a lot, but... Yeah. Oh, I mean, she actually skilled sets? Oh, Winron did? Um, no. D oh, no, no that's, from the, that's branches. from the branches. Okay, no, no, yeah. Yep. no. Um, I mean, the Radiant team, they can't really kill, because like, like we mentioned, they don't really have much to initiate with, apart yeah. from the CM. But the fact is, they're farming so well, they don't even need to get any kills to win this lane, because winner with 3 CS and level 2, that's them winning the lane right there. Yeah. Mm. They, they don't seem to be able to harass 
anyone of ESG right now either. I mean, they're just able to harass and then and then the diary backs off and they can just continue. Yep, Slider will find a top rune in Viz. Um, probably not going to be able to get any kills um, without any sort of a gank there, but it'll definitely help him stay in the lane. He can be a bit more aggressive in his harass. Um, like, yeah, he can just keep get scaring the Marana away from the farm, which is going to be fairly useful to help him keep on farming. Yep, Susie has an escape. Actually getting some nice investment in now. There's no, uh, there's no regen on the Marana at the moment, so she's going to need to have something soon. Yeah, maybe just go back to base, um, because low on HP and low on mana. Yeah, gonna leap yeah. back to base, probably TP back, probably mid, but may even go look for a gank at bottom or top if she wants to. Yeah, well, she gonna, she's gonna have a hard time at top, because uh, the lane is, is keep, kept being pushed out by the Dark Seer's Iron Shell, so the fight's constantly near the tower, and I think Queen of Pain will uh, be able to avoid that quite easily. But yep. uh, on on the bottom lane, perhaps. Ooh, there's the Slardar, by the way, on the bottom lane, and he's gonna find the Lashrak. There's the stun, amplify damage on there, <laughs> and the power shot finish him off. Windrunner gets the kill. Nice, uh, nice stun. And I think a bit yep. of a slightly is uh, well, bit of bad commu communication from the Marana there, because it seemed like they didn't know that uh, that um, Slardar was there. I actually have to say, there's only one ward on the whole map. And that's almost yeah, gonna this, go away. This is, I mean, this is because the first wards are planted right away. at the zero. The, I mean, right at the start of, the, and they only last for six minutes. So often around six minutes, there's suddenly an opportunity to go look for a gank because the other team doesn't immediately get new wards. So often you'll see teams looking to get their first ganks come around six to seven minutes, which is what Slada just did there. The wards expired, and then he goes looking for a gank. So it's it's not really it's a bit of a, it's not <laughs> that he goes to gank when there's no wards up. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I forgot there's one word up for uh, for ESG on the bottom lane, but yeah. Nope. There's a second. Never mind. There we go. And then Marana gets double damage. Oh, it ex activates as she had it earlier already. And she, she now has a bottle too. The, Sorry? the two supports, the Earthshaker and the Ventral Spirit, have smoked and they're going to be good looking for a gank on mid. Yeah, smoke is, uh, smoke is off now. Stun is off. Second stun already. And another stun and Power Shot going through from the Windrunner from the far side. Getting the kill. Nice farm for the Windrunner. Uh, not a very friendly four-man four, four gank. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they basically, I think, uh, or they, they thought it was needed for the, for the Moran, even though I think uh, three, or three would have been enough. Well, it's more that they can't really do much at bottom lane. They can leave the Windrunner alone at bottom lane, but then, well, th I mean, Windrunner's not going to be able to go near the creep wave anyway, so Windrunner may as well go as well. Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> there's a gank on the Vengeful Spirit! They managed to kill her off from the high ground? Wow. That was, that was smart. That I mean, was very the smart. The, the range form and the Breath of Fire, I mean, Leshrac, even the Edict was hitting from the high ground. That was yeah. just oh. using that wood to uh, great effect. I think that's the first time I've seen that, like, gang from the high ground. And they could do that because they had the ward there. They knew she was there. Or they knew she was going to come there. Yep. Nice. And, and uh, uh, Crystal Main got the kill, though. But uh, kills really a kill. Matter. I mean, yeah, kills a kill. Um, they're going to actually look to pressure this tower at bottom a bit. It's currently full HP, but they're going to put down the Edict, maybe. Yeah, yeah they, they put have. down the Edict. The glyph is popped, and... They're going to have to back off now as the creep wave is dying very quickly. Yeah, Edict is off already also, but at least they got the Fortify out of the way. That might uh, be something. Ooh, there's uh, trouble on the top lane. Darkseer and uh, Queen of Pain. Darkseer getting the last hit with uh, Vacuum and Iron Shell. Queen of Pain used the ulti wow. there, but Darkseer getting Queen the better of, of that one. That's not what you'd expect, especially where Queen of Pain is so far ahead in farm and Darkseer is the one getting the kill there. Darkseer is actually catching up. Darkseer is 35 CS now. So it's uh, only about a, a, bit, a bit less than 20 CS behind, but the main difference is going to be those huge amount of denies, the 20 denies on the Queen of Pain. Yeah, and, uh, well, that kill make, makes it a little bit more even. Yeah, yeah I, I think uh, Queen of Pain kind of overestimated herself. Though. Oh, she wants to try again. There we go. Surge is on. I wonder if she's going to be able to catch up. The blink is uh, on cooldown for now. Uh, actually, there's... There's the teleporting coming. Even I think even if uh, nah, she doesn't want to try anymore. Last hit doesn't kill him. No, doesn't kill him. Smart TPs there. Without yeah. those TPs, Queen of Pain probably would have stayed and just gotten those right clicks off. 
with uh, Scared Queen paying off, and now Letrak can just stay top, get some farm while the Dark Sea heals up. Yeah, clever um, cancel teleport. I think it was from the from the Dragonite or from Crystal Maiden. I don't know. But at least only one uh, managed to get there. And that was, one yeah. was what needed. Defensive ward from uh, from the Dire on the bottom lane. Able to see g incoming ganks now. That will help them. Yep, and Slada has once again come to gank bottom lane, so they're definitely looking for a kill here. Um, they may even go for the DK, because with the Amplify damage, they, they can manage that, but nope, Slada are going to decide against it. And he gets spotted by the ward too, so that's important. Yeah, they know that they're semi-safe again. Even though it's still 3 two, one The Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Marana getting blasted on that. Yeah, Marana's farming fairly well, has 1600 gold, phase boots and bottle, um, probably just going to go for the Yasha and then get a Manta style after that, but um, despite dying once that one time early on, um, is going to be able to, I mean, get up a fair bit of items and right-click damage this game by the looks of it. Yeah, and the tower uh, kind of made the advantage that uh, ESG already has had from the gold graph, yep. it uh, spiked up over 2k now. Yeah, the Radiant team, um, ESG, they're, I mean, they're farming well in all three lanes. DK at bottom, Marana at mid, and Darkseer at top, where if you look at the Dire team, Windrunner at bottom did not really farm well at all. Nope. Even though she did catch up a little bit, and she has two kills, so... It's it's not hopeless, but oh, it's, no. it's, it's a lot too... less. It was uh, just a slow start, but uh, yeah. finding time to catch up, and I mean, Slider at mid is always going to get somewhat outfined by the Marana because of the range to Ras. Um, but right now, I mean, the game is still very even. It's really only the one tower which is making the big difference. Yeah, and Crystal Maiden uh, has money for boots now, but uh, I think she's going to need them soon because otherwise the ganks will be incoming on her uh, quite, a, quite a lot. Yeah, especially against the Slada. <laughs> yeah. <with> that. <laughs> that will uh, be painful. Slada is still getting harassed quite a bit by Murana, who's not getting... Uh, or who's not afraid, seemingly. And now uh, she got a bracer and a and a leprosy blade. See him, in, see him in trouble at bottom. Yeah, but also uh, vengeful spirit are, uh, in trouble. The edict doing a lot of damage. Windrunner actually probably getting the kill there on Crystal Maiden, but Windrunner herself is uh, about to die. I think one uh, run right click away. Those face boots. There we go. Double kill. The surge uh, was on there, but just too late. Not needed. Yeah, Lesher could have. CM got initiated on, but Leshrag hit a stun that hit two heroes, which uh, was set up both those two kills there. So really nice stun there coming out from Sava. Yeah, and they're going to be able to uh, do quite a bit of damage on the tower again. Edict is off cooldown again. Creep wave gone. Yep. Slarla with invisibility rune. Once again. But not uh, aiming for bottom lane. And Darkseer returning top. Darkseer's actually picked up a hood, so he's going to be going for that quick pipe. Uh, he's got a hood and the headdress, so he's going to get pipe up, I mean, fairly quickly. He only needs another 700 gold. And meanwhile, another tower goes down, so ESG, they have a lot more pushing power. Um, you, yeah. The uh, Urshake of Ventral Spirit, I mean, these heroes just don't really push all that well, but the supports for the Radiant team with the less track, I mean, even Darkseer is a nice hero to have for a pushing lineup. Yeah, you can... Uh kill out those creep waves easily with an uh, EOS shell. And, and actually, uh, FM seems to have, I mean, they will have to get all their gold from the farming, and like we said, their farming isn't all there yet. So they're going to have an even, even harder time, even though I do always think that when a tower goes down, they have extra space to farm a creep wave if the lane gets pushed a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. no, definitely agree with that. The ganks will, de will happen less often on their own half of the map, so to speak. And there's uh, another incoming gank. Range stun is going to come off on the Vengeful Spirit, but uh, th <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome oh, fish. Here. She's not there, not able to, to get uh, there. Nice shackle shot going through. And uh, there we go. I think, nah, they won't have enough. That armor is just too ma too much. Yeah, it's they. Be able to back off. They got DK down. Oh wow. Meanwhile, Queen of Pain picks up a kill on Darks here at top with a Slada gank. So. Slada coming in top. Slada now has 2.2k gold. He could even pick up a Blink Dagger if he wants, and it looks like Slada and Queen of Pain, they want to take out this T1 tower in the top lane. Yeah, and, and I think they're, they're going to be at least able to take off uh, quite a chunk with uh, no teleport jet coming in, and I think... Uh, oh, let's, let's have a teleport again. 
But uh, yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna have a tower. They're not gonna be gonna trade it for something though, as in uh, ESG doesn't seem to want to trade somewhere. They're not gonna be able to take a kill. Mm. Yeah, they're not really in position to take any towers or get any kills. The winner yeah. at bottom is being protected, so um, they, and their heroes aren't really ready to defend that top lane. So they're gonna whoop, they're gonna try going co-op. Arrow gonna go flying, but not gonna hit it. Oh, I have an issue with my mouse. I have to unplug and plug again. I'm gonna. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. Oh, that's yeah. okay. 